I feel like Ghost Ogre is usually really, really good or really, really bad. Okay, so I don't know if you've watched my most recent TCG metagame breakdown, but basically a lot of people started playing Ghost Ogre as of lately, which is surprising considering the fact it wasn't seeing any play before. Now, of course, there are a lot of reasons for that, but before I start covering anything positive about Ghost Ogre, I'll start covering the negative aspects of the card first. So Ghost Ogre is obviously once per turn, just like its other Ghost Sister counterparts, and on top of that, it doesn't negate anything, it only destroys. It's the opposite of Ash, which only negates and doesn't destroy. On top of that, Ghost Ogre is often very, very dead against so many matchups such as trap decks like Edlich, and you'd rather draw any other card against it such as an engine card or an extender or a board breaking card like a back removal. Now when Ogre does work well, it works pretty well. Against Journey of Destiny, for example, either trying to search the equip spell or the Wandering Griffin Rider, you can Ghost Ogre it, destroy it, and it indirectly negates the card just like MST would negate and destroy Journey of Destiny while it's trying to search. Yes, MST negate, I know, how funny. But the reason for that is because continuous and field spell cards, for example, they usually have to stay on the field in order to resolve fully, so if you destroy them, they don't stay on the field on resolution, therefore, they do not resolve at 100%, so they cannot fulfill their search or special summon or whatever. And one thing that I'm not sure if a lot of people really understand is the fact that Ghost Ogre can be used on the Wandering Griffin Rider to stop it from negating you because Griffin Rider isn't a card that tributes itself or sends itself to the graveyard as a cost to negate anything. As a matter of fact, nothing that it does is a cost. It shuffles back itself to the deck and that's all part of the effect. So it really has to do that successfully if it wants to negate. So you can even draw Ghost Ogre for turn as your sixth card and you'll be able to negate or rather destroy the Grif Griffin Rider, which again, indirectly negates it. And one extremely underrated thing about the Ghost Ogre as well is the fact that when you use it on Journey of Destiny, your opponent loses the Journey of Destiny, of course, but also he doesn't get access to the Equip Cell and Griffin Rider, which means that the Magician Souls won't be able to send two free cards to draw two free cards. And also, Ghost Ogre is pretty good against Crystal Needle Fiber trying to summon Desbot 1 because if you do that, well, how is your opponent trying to go into Aura Dawn? It's going to be so hard because your opponent needs to use only Machine Monsters to do it and he only has one, which is the Desbot 1, so the combo might be completely dead there. But yeah, as I said, Ghost Ogre is typically pretty bad against Trap decks and also sometimes against combo or mid-range decks, it's not ideal. I mean, against Prank Kids, this card literally achieves absolutely nothing at all. If you normal summon a Prank Kid, you're not using the effect of either a Prank Kid or the the Meow Meow, your Doodle Doo, which is technically a card that could theoretically lose to Ogre, will not really lose to Ogre because it can be chain blocked in Chain Link 1 with the other prank kid in the graveyard being in Chain Link 2. It also doesn't really have any guarantees of being very very good against Flunderies unless your opponent is relying on the field spell to play. Even though a lot of people are playing it right now, I don't think they're playing it because they think the card is really good, but because there are honestly not enough options to deal with how oppressive combo decks are, and they just have to play something that aren't just board breaking cards because by the time you get to Dark Ruler your opponent, you would have already resolved the artifact scythe on your standby phase anyways, so Dark Ruler is not an option, and Forbidden Drop cannot be used while Herald of the Arclight is on the field because cards that are in the hand or in the deck have to be banished instead of being sent to the graveyard. So yeah, in conclusion, if you are playing Ghost Ogre, it's probably the last priority in your hand trap uh, lineup, so don't try to play it as your first hand trap because I don't think it's that good. If you are playing Ogre, it probably means that you're playing 12 hand traps at this point, and you really should be playing the other kind of smaller board breaking cards, maybe Forbidden Chalice is still a pretty good card, and Droplet is still relatively good, it just depends on what you are playing against. So that's pretty much all I have to say for this video, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon, peace.